I never put my phone on airplane mode. Everyone is ready, people. It's okay. Uh, normally, we have a guy uh, who, before the show, has a clipboard. I've talked about clipboard guy before, um, uh, and he goes through the clipboard and then he does this fake point at me thing when we're ready to start the show, uh, which is not actually fake. Like uh, there's, the, it, it's crazy when you're making a television show. There's all kinds of stuff that happens behind the scenes. Uh, that like they're getting stuff ready and they're balancing things and they're getting the audio right and I'm just sitting here like like bored out of my mind camera oh look I'm on the wrong camera see here's the, here's the other thing clipboard guy is okay so clipboard guy there's things happening uh, and I'm here talking to our large audience uh, and thinking about what I'm gonna say during the show right and they eventually all get ready and then they're like well let's start taping the show and then they let the tape run for five or ten seconds to make sure that things are going. And I say tape. There's no tape, people. It's just a computer hard drive. And it's not even spinning anymore. It's just a, it's a thing. It's magical. It's like one of them hologram cubes, uh, except it's got a SATA interface. Um, anyway, then clipboard guy, he's got a little headset on. And then he'll, like, point at me. And he'll go, time to start the show. And that's, that's great. Uh, and then the editor just, you know, later when he does it, he drops the opening right before the pointing thing. And we have a show. We have a whole show going on, and it seems like we're professional. Uh, but Clipboard Guy, Clipboard Guy is, is, is on the verge of death. Uh, I'm told he's at home uh, in his sick bed. Uh, they've tilted it up. Uh, they're stuffing chipped ice into his mouth. Um, you know, his, his cat is nearby waiting patiently so they can jump up and suck the last breath out of his mouth when his soul escapes. Um, that's, that's what's happening. Clipboard guy near death. Um, if you know Clipboard guy, uh, text him your condolences. Uh, and maybe the people in the room will read them, you know, for him. Uh, uh so Clipboard guy near death. So we got no clipboard guy, so there's no one to point. Um, uh, the other thing clipboard guy does is he tells me what camera to look at. So there's none of that. Like, I'm just going to be looking at cameras randomly, uh, and I assume technology is going to do the right thing. Like, watch. I'm going to look at a different camera right now, and I, th I, I can't. T yeah, yeah, look, look. They changed the camera. So now I'm looking into the camera again. Like, if I look back at two, look. Ha-ha. Tried to fool you. But it didn't work. Um, that's Clipboard Guy. Anyway, this show, since we got no Clipboard Guy, we were like, can we do a show without Clipboard Guy? Uh, and then we laughed. <laughs> of course we can do a show without Clipboard Guy. I mean, it's not going to be a good show because of the pointing. Uh, and uh, well, that's, that's really all Clipboard Guy does is pointing. But this show needs a tiny bit of pointing, apparently. Uh, let's all... Before I forget, I was going to do this at the end of the show, uh, but I'm, I'm going to forget by then. Uh, everyone that wants Clipboard Guy to live needs to clap your hands and say, live Clipboard Guy. It's just like in that Peter Pan thing when you're in fourth grade and you think you accomplished something, uh, and really all that happened is a guy in the lighting staff, you know, turned the spot down a lot. Uh, and then turn the spot back up again, and Tinkerbell was alive. Um, okay, that's, I'm done talking about Clipboard Guy, um, unless he dies. If they text me and say he actually has passed away, uh, then I will mourn him on the air, uh, brief whatever you say at someone's funeral, except it won't be his funeral yet. Uh, tonight's show is also kind of a weird grab baggy show. Uh, we. All the big stuff uh, that I thought we could talk about on the show just depresses the shit out of me. So I'm not talking about that. Um, and what that means is I'm down to talking about stuff that's not the big stuff. Um, camera two, look, I'm supposed to go to camera two. <sighs> uh, so I just made a list. I made a long list of stuff I could talk about, and we'll see where I get to. Uh, and none of it, none of it is important, people. 
you could turn the television off right now, or you could close your computer. Uh, you could go talk to your family. Uh, you can maybe go outside, uh, have a, I was going to say have a jog, a little exercise, uh, adopt a kitten. Um, you could do any of those things, or you could keep watching uh, and hear me talk about the craziest, the, the, this stuff. Uh, and first thing, uh, went to my doctor yesterday, because uh, I, I went jogging on Sunday, and then Sunday night my foot hurt, and I thought, well, this is what happens when you're old. Um, you go jogging, and then your feet hurt, and then you wake up the next day and your feet are better, and then a couple days later you go jogging again, because... You're trying to go jogging to get in shape uh, because you don't think you're in good shape and you don't want to die early and you want to lose a little weight um, and you don't want to die and you're 50 and you're old. Monday I got up and my foot didn't feel better. So I was like, wow, apparently now it takes two days. Now it takes two days for your feet to stop hurting. And then Tuesday still hurt, hurt more, hurt, uh, hurt the same on Tuesday, but it so by Wednesday, I was like, well, I have health insurance for another couple months till it gets dismantled. Um, and so I'm going to go see my doctor, and I'm going to ask him what's up. And he's going to tell me, you have a tiny fracture in your foot, uh, and you should. we're going to put a big cast on it, and everything will be fine. Uh, and I went there, uh, and he looked at my foot, uh, and he, he did the craziest things to my foot with his hands, he was just like twisting around like, does it hurt now, does it hurt now, does it hurt now? Uh, it was like the, the cellular phone guy, except with feet, and does it hurt now? Uh, and at the end of all that, he's, and I could tell, the longer this went on, the more he was like, I don't know why this guy is bothering me. I went to medical school, and I'm playing with a guy's foot, really, is what I'm doing. Uh, and at the end of it, he was like, well, turns out you have something called, and I gotta read it, plantar, fasciitis or heel spur pain. Yeah, I, I mispronounced it. I always mispronounce it. I want to say fascist, plantar fascist, but it's not, it's not that. I just have fascists on the brain right now. Um, and it's like, it's like a muscle on the bottom of your foot. I didn't even know you had muscles in the bottom of your foot. Like I, I know about the big muscles, right? They're like, these are your, you know, you get bicep curls and tricep curls and you got, who knew feet had muscles? Uh, but apparently they do, uh, and apparently if you don't stretch enough before you go jogging, uh, or if you're old, sometimes you are going to irritate those muscles, and then there is nothing you can do about it. You just have to wait for them to stop hurting. Um, so I have this thing, now I have to wait. I have to take it easy. I have to wait until my the muscle above my foot stops hurting, um, and I'm supposed to massage it. He gave me some instructions about foot massage. Three, three. The cameras are the, the pointing guy. Turns out pointing guy does something useful, uh, is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm, I'm going to feel bad when pointing guy is dead. Um, anyway, so I posted this on my little Facebook page. And then like 90 friends of mine all chimed in talking about how horrible this was. Uh, this has apparently been, been wreaking havoc among people I know. Uh, and they're like, yeah, that's terrible. Like, you, my foot hurt for a year and a half, and I finally managed to fix it. Now I'm like, well, great. Now I've got this horrible foot. I'm just hoping it gets better. Uh, I gotta keep, I'm gonna ice it. Uh, strangely, I'm supposed to ice it and put heating, pa heating pad on it. Uh, I don't think at the same time, because uh, that would seem to counter. And I, <sighs> right now, I, changing topics. Uh, right now, we are, we, the other thing we could have done tonight, instead of taping the TV show, uh, is we could have gone down to our nerd night thing. Um, nerd night was always on Tuesdays. This month it's on a Thursday. I don't know why. Um, uh, and the guys, the people in nerd night, one of them is apparently trying to bring back the passenger pigeon. You know, like he's trying to Jurassic Park passenger pigeons. Uh, I assume by extracting passenger pigeon DNA from amber. Uh, or from one of the many passenger pigeons we have in museums around the world, stuffed with the little things out next to the exhibit that talks about how mankind made the passenger pigeon go extinct by shooting all of them. Just all of them. I still can't get over this. There were like millions of passenger pigeons, and then people were like, you know what's fun to do? Shoot pigeons. I'm going to go out and shoot 
they had to know that there were fewer and fewer of them. I mean, wouldn't someone eventually say, hey, maybe we should stop shooting these pigeons so that we still have pigeons to... Apparently, they didn't. Anyway, some guy trying to bring the passenger pigeon back, which I am fully behind. Um, I do kind of assume that if we somehow manage to breathe life into the passenger pigeon, the extinct passenger pigeon with the DNA and stuff, that those, those passenger pigeons will come back without souls, uh, and then they will wreak havoc uh, on man, as is. That's, that's what always happens in every movie I've ever seen. So get ready for that, people. It wasn't zombies. It was zombie passenger pigeons uh, that brought about the decline of mankind. <sighs> okay, this has been on the list for a long time, uh, and I never managed to get to it. Uh, I went to Missouri last summer because um, I'm a bad person, and I needed to be punished, and Missouri was punishing because uh, Missouri. Um, and not even, not even someplace in Missouri you've heard of. Uh, we went to Nevada, Missouri. That's, it's, it's, it's the name of another state in another state. Like, if you said, where are you from, and then you said Nevada, I'd be like, oh, and then you'd go, comma, Missouri, and I'd be like, that's a dumb name. Why, why did you name something in Missouri, Nevada? We got a state with that name. Now, maybe it was named that first, but they've had like 100 years to fix it. I mean, there's like 800 people in this town. You think they'd all get together and go, okay, we're tired of our mail showing up in the wrong state like it has been for the last 70 years. How about we change our name to Pleasanton or Sunnydale or something? Uh, anyway, we were in Missouri, uh, and we were looking for stuff to do. Um, we went to Yelp, and it said there's a, there's a winery in Nevada, Missouri. And we were like, wow, we like wine, and wineries are where you get wine from, so we're going to go to this winery. Um, it seemed a little weird. I mean, like I think when I think wineries, I think Napa. I think big brick buildings um, with large casks full of grape juice and such and such. Um, and this winery was basically a it was a large tough shed uh, in a guy's backyard. Um, and he, we we drove past it the first time because we did not think that a winery would be in a large tough shed in a guy's backyard, but it was. Uh, and so we went in, and there was a guy there, the winery guy, uh, and he was very nice. Like, it was great to talk to him. He's a nice guy. Uh, he likes to grow grapes. He likes to make wine from the grapes he grows, uh, and he bottles the wine somewhere. We didn't go into that. Uh, and then he, like, sells it in the local restaurants, and he has a winery in his backyard in a tough shed. Um, and the wine was okay. I mean, it was, it was fine for Missouri. Uh, and a lot of it was kind of sweet, which I think is great. But again, we were, we were standing in a tough shed uh, with a very low ceiling, like a, like a foot above my head is where the ceiling was, uh, tasting wine out of little tasty wine glasses. And then we bought wine in a box and then we brought it home, and now I have Missouri wine in my wine fridge. And every once in a while, we're like, hey, we should drink some of that Missouri wine. But then we drink other wine, because we have a lot of wine, is what I'm saying. Um, if you're in Nevada, Missouri, and you want wine, uh, you can go to the Tough Shed, you can buy some, or you go to Walmart, uh, and you can buy wine. I don't think there's anywhere else you can buy wine in Nevada. I mean, they might have had a 7-Eleven. I'm not sure if you could buy wine there. I'm not even sure they had a 7-Eleven. <sighs> Facebook. Um, I'm sure you've all noticed that, that you, you can't go on Facebook anymore without being angry. Because, um, like, I'll be sitting in my house, and I'll be like, clearly nothing bad has happened in the last 45 minutes. And then I'll command N, Facebook.com, carriage return. And then I'll hit space. Um, and yeah, turns out, turns out someone, someone did something bad again, uh, and Facebook is just full of angry people, 
people pointing out hypocrisy uh, and other things. Um, I've thought of leaving Facebook, but I'm apparently not emotionally capable of that. Um, so instead, I just kind of scroll past, and every once in a while I'll be like, I can type something really pithy that will make me feel better as a comment on this story. And then I will type it, and I will hit carriage return, and then I will realize that did not help me feel better. So just, it, I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to do, people. I don't know what we're going to do. We are... We are 1% into the current presidency. We have 99% of it still to go. Um, uh, back in last fall, uh, HBO had this, this series called Westworld on, and it started, and I had heard it was going to be good, so I told my little TiVo-y thing, uh, which is not an actual TiVo, hey, record Westworld when it's on, um, and then it did. Uh, and it took us a while to start watching it because we were busy. Remember, it's holiday season. Um, but we finally started watching it. Uh, and we watched the whole thing, like 10 episodes, like uh, 12 hours. It was, it was, and Loretta and I both enjoyed it a lot because um, it's, it's science fiction-y. It's kind of in my wheelhouse, right? It's like robots and AI, and you don't quite know what's going on. And there's, uh, as the show goes on, you realize that you're seeing things from different time periods interspersed, and you got to figure out when each one is happening, and they aren't explaining the backgrounds for everyone. Um, but, like, there, you know, there's the creepy old guy, and there's the freckle-faced young guy, and there's the Dolores robot who's all nice and friendly and everything. And Red um, and I enjoyed watching the show. Uh, and, and I recall when we were watching the show, right, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Uh, and I've been studiously avoiding, avoiding spoilers. Like, I had friends who would talk about it, and I'd just leave. I'd be like, hey, I got I haven't watched it yet. Uh, and I had other friends that, like, did a whole podcast on Westworld, and I was like, I'm not listening to your podcast. I'll see the show. Uh, so I had managed to avoid pretty much all the spoilers. Um, so we, we watched Westworld, and we, like I said, I really liked it. We watched it twice uh, for two reasons. First of all, it's the kind of thing that when you watch it the second time, you realize all of these things that you should have caught the first time. Because, like, some stuff's happening earlier and later, and there's some foreshadowing of what's going to happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, and the second reason is, uh, as, as many of you in California know, uh, last November uh, we passed a proposition in California that made weed legal to possess uh, and, and stuff. Um, and I somehow had made it to age 50 without ever doing any marijuana whatsoever because I I was one of them clean-cut guys like hey it's illegal I'm not gonna do it uh, and then they were like hey well it's medical but I was like I don't actually have any huge medical like I don't have glaucoma um, or any huge thing that would fix it but so we we thought hey let's try this thing out we we enjoy drinking uh, and we're kind of good at that and we're told that this is different but similar um, so I'm just going to say, uh, I, I have made it this far in my life, not understanding how people could binge watch things on Netflix. Um, and then we got one of them, one of them weed edible things. And then we, we ate the weed edible thing. Uh, and then we started watching Westworld and it took a while for it to kick in. Um, but when it kicked in, all of a sudden, I understand how people binge watch things on Netflix. <laughs> I really, like, I think I could have sat there for a long time binge watching things. Because ordinarily, when I'm watching TV, that's like 30% of my brain is watching TV. And another 20% is, is working on whatever I'm doing on the computer. And, 10% is making a list of all the stuff I got to do tomorrow or next week. Or another 5% is remembering all the stuff I thought I was going to do a week ago but didn't do. So now I got it. Um, and apparently, like, all of that just gets turned down to zero. Uh, and I was, so we, I kind of had to watch it a second time because I, I wasn't totally sure what happened occasionally. Um, and it also kind of apparently futzes with your sense of time. 
And when you're watching a TV show which is intentionally screwing with your notion of the sense of time, if you don't have a, your own sense of, of when things are happening, you got to watch it again, uh, is what I'm saying. Uh, it was a good show. If you haven't seen it, I, I, we did enjoy it. Uh, I think if, you, if you've made it this far into this show, um, or if you've ever watched another episode of Keith Explains, you're, you're nerd adjacent. You're the kind of person that would probably enjoy Westworld. Um, what else? Another thing that's been on the list for a while, uh, we went and saw a movie called Arrival last fall, um, which I went and saw because someone said, hey, you should see Arrival. It's a, good sh it's a good movie. It's based on a book. Don't read anything before you see the movie about the movie because it'll ruin it for you, like, like Fight Club. Like, uh, I didn't watch Fight Club when Fight Club came out because I'm like, why do I want to watch a movie about people punching each other? I mean, first of all, they have that on HBO on Saturday nights, and I don't watch it then. I, I'm not the kind of guy that watches guys fighting each other. Um, and then, like, a couple years later, someone's like, yeah, Fight Club, it's that weird movie where you think people are all fighting each other, and then later you realize that Brad Pitt is a figment of Edward Norton's imagination, and I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, didn't you know that? And I'm like, well, no, I didn't watch the movie. And they're like, oh. Sorry. Uh, and then I was like, well, I got to see this. So then I watched the movie. And Fight Club, it's, 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 it's a weird movie, but it's pretty good. Um, if you can see it without knowing uh, that, you know, Ed Norton has Brad Pitt as a figment of his imagination, which you can't, because I just told you. Um, if, if you just turn the TV on right now, go see Fight Club. Uh, and don't watch the previous 30 seconds when I'm talking about things. Anyway, Arrival. Um, is a, uh, people said you're gonna like this movie because it's about aliens that come to Earth, but they don't try to blow it up, or you know they don't have a lot of the other problems that aliens have come to Earth movies are like, you know, on Independence Day, somehow aliens can get here in huge spaceships by the dozen, uh, but they have to use our satellites to communicate around the planet, because they didn't think to bring any of their own, nor, nor could they, having many ships in orbit, just have direct line of sight to each other, which they might have anyway. Um, and then once they get here, like Jeff Goldblum is able to, in an afternoon, construct a computer virus which destroys their entire network. And I'm like, how? No one is ever going to build a complicated computer network without having to deal with viruses just like you can't build an email network without dealing with spam. Spam will just start happening. It, uh, anyway, Rival, like the aliens aren't here trying to kill us. Uh, they aren't trying to take over. No one's exactly sure why they're here. Uh, and that's what the whole point of the movie is. Like you, we're trying to figure out why are they here? How can we talk to them? Also, there's no universal translator. Uh, I, I particularly like that part. And, and Amy Adams in the movie plays a linguist who they hire, you have to hire, you gotta hire people that understand languages to go figure out how we talk to these aliens cause they are apparently not, they have not been listening to our I Love Lucy reruns for the last 40 years to have picked up English. Um, which probably, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil Arrival for you cause it's, like it's up for Academy Awards, so it might still be in the theaters in some places, and it might get like if it wins an award, they'll bring it back, and then you can go watch it. So I'm not gonna, men but I'm gonna say it's a it, it's an enjoyable movie, um, and you should see it because uh, we did like it. Um, uh, there's no show next month. Uh, don't uh, first Thursday in March. You're gonna be like it's Keith Explains Day. Uh, I'm assuming that you guys have that in your calendars that every first Thursday, Keith Explains Day, and all day long you're excited. You're like, tonight, Keith Explains, we're gonna watch Keith Explain things. We're gonna, it's not gonna happen in March, uh, cause I'm not gonna be here in March. I'm gonna be on a boat on the ocean, or in port, I'm not sure where we are on Thursday. I'm gonna be on a boat uh, and I'll have a glass 
with an adult beverage or a lot of adult beverages. Uh, and I'll be surrounded by nerds. It's a boat full of nerds. Um, if, you're, if you're nerd adjacent uh, and you have a lot of money and you don't have anything to do the first week of March and you'd like to go on a cruise with a bunch of other people, you should sign up, uh, jococruise.com, or you go next year. Um, but we enjoy it because uh, it's like seven days and there's this community of nerds and they have geek musicians and they have New York Times bestselling authors that have written science fiction and come and talk to them and a bunch of other comedians. We've got a bunch of comedians coming. I wish I remember who they were. Uh, Ray Butcher's coming. She's nice. Uh, but mostly it's, it's very fun. Um, I never thought I'd be a cruise ship guy and Loretta Kalina always wanted to go on a cruise. I'm not sure why she did, but she did. Uh, and I was like, why would I get in a boat? I have a house. I like my house most of the time. But then this one came up, and they were like, yeah, here's some musicians you like and whatever, and you can take Loretta, and she'll enjoy being on a cruise. And so we signed up. Now we go every year because apparently we're that kind of people. Um, funny thing, I have no idea how long I'm talking for. So we could be like, we could have like three minutes left in the show, or we could have like 26 minutes left in the show. Minute and a half. We got a minute and a half left. Okay. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna put those two aside. Uh, Dirk, another TV show we saw. Remember, we we got all the way through Westworld. Uh, the other show that we started watching, haven't finished watching yet, uh, was Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, which is on BBC America, uh, and it has has a lot of commercials. Uh, so I don't like that part because I have to fast forward. Um, uh, but I will tell you, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, uh, based on a it's not based on a book by Douglas Adams, because I don't. I read all of his books, and this isn't one of them. But the characters are from the book Dirk Gently's. We're halfway through, and I'm going to say this is. I'm greatly enjoying it, uh, in part because it seems very true to what the books would have been uh, if Douglas Adams hadn't passed away. Um, and I, Douglas Adams was a Mac guy, and he used to come to Mac developer conferences, and like he, he spoke at a Mac developers conference, and I knew who he was. I went and I, I knew who he was. I went and listened to him, and it was a fun talk. Uh, and he knew he was talking to an audience full of computery people. Uh, and at the time, I think he was doing his, he, he wrote a book called Last Chance to See, where he traveled around the world uh, and looked at endangered or past endangered species. Um, and then took a picture of him and wrote a story about him. Uh, and he, he went through this long story where he talked about things. Yeah, I know, we're wrapping up. There's credits rolling, there's credits rolling. I, I, I did, he, he gave this 45 minute talk and very early on he had said something about, hey, I wrote a hypercard stack to do this, remind me to talk about it. Uh, and of course in the audience, we couldn't let him stop before we told him about that. He was a great guy. Uh, I, wish he'd, I wish he hadn't died um, from, well, from whatever he died from. I think he didn't get a Okay, thank you all for watching the show. Uh, we'll do it again two months from now. Uh, and as, as with last month, Keith Explains 3.0, uh, we're going to try and post this by next Monday. So if you watched on Facebook, you saw it three days early. Otherwise, everyone else sees it next week. Um, goodbye, everybody.